I trusted Jesus Christ as my Savior on November 5th, 2001. God changed my life drastically. I never was the same since that day. But I noticed something as I was growing in my faith and living the Christian life. I noticed that there were a lot of people that were my age that were seemingly falling away. Like I was running to God and they were kind of just falling off the wagon and going away from God. And it seemed like there was a pull that the world had on people. And, of course, we know that the rock music world is always trying to allure people towards itself. Of course, that's how it exists. That's how it operates. That's how it makes money, by sensationalism and by the allure, the lust, and, of, and the appeal of all that. Of course, that's what they do. But I saw another appeal that was a religious appeal that pulled people away from Bible doctrine as well, but it did it in the name of Jesus Christ. And that baffled me. I, had, I, I didn't even know what to do with that. I want to tell you that there is a seducing spirit that brings doctrines of devils into a ministry, into a church, into a person's life. It'll bring it into your life, too. And I want you to see this. The Bible clearly states in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith. Notice this, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. Now, the doctrines of devils, that is something pretty easy to identify. Uh, basically, that's New Age religion. And I think the hidden religion of today that is everywhere, yet nowhere, nobody seems to catch it, nobody seems to see it, and, but it's everywhere, is New Age religion. Alice Bailey, Helena Blavatsky, even Aleister Crowley and men like Jack Patterson were into all of this. This is the occult. It's another form of mystery Babylon religion, if you will. It is a doctrine of devils that if you believe this, you're going far from God as fast as you can. Folks, this channel is dedicated to exposing the lies exposing the errors, exposing the, the, the absolute unbelievable spiritual seduction of these last days. We are committed to that, and we need your help in this fight. This is the last stand. These are the last days. We are rounding the last turn, and it's time that you wake up. God bless you, friend, and we will talk to you very soon. sing, I just want to sing. <laughs> Once I wandered out in sin, had no peace, no joy within me, and my soul was burdened down with pride. But the Savior came along.
Hey guys, it's your friend Spencer here. We're doing our Thursday night live stream like we always do. So glad to see you guys here. And uh, we are going to be speaking on the glorious downfall of Hillsong tonight. Mm. Many people, probably some already in the comment section, are, are chattering and saying, how dare you speak about a church and a ministry in a derogatory way? And their poor little Laodicean hearts don't know the difference between truth and error. To them, discerning truth from error is unloving and not kind. These people don't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. They don't believe in sound Bible doctrine. They believe in New Age mysticism. They believe in just kumbaya religion, which is as far removed from Bible Christianity as the East is from the West. These people believe in the gospel of nice, not the gospel of the grace of God. These people believe in a different Jesus. And I want to tell you right now that we're going to talk about Hillsong tonight. We're going to do some plain talk. We're going to tell you the truth about these people. And we're going to give you the glorious news that this whole thing is falling apart by the seams. And for that, we say thank God. So Levi is here with us tonight. And uh, how you doing, Levi? It's always great to be here, brother. Good. I'm, I'm glad you're about here. this topic. <clears throat> yeah, me too. <laughs> and uh, good news, uh, Johnny and his wife had a baby. And isn't that good, Brother Levi? Mm, it's a cutie. Oh, yeah, it's a little it's a cutie. cutie. Yeah. They had a baby, so Johnny's not here tonight. Uh, she had the baby <laughs> uh, Wednesday morning at like 2-something in the morning. And uh, so we, I, I decided to be benevolent and let Johnny just have the night off, you know, and uh, that's what we did. So, no, they're they're all uh, well and uh, doing wonderful, so thank God for that, and uh, we appreciate that very much. So let's get into the Bible tonight, and uh, that will be a great blessing, as we always try to do on this channel, and I wish we could do more of it. I want to do more of it, and uh, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, let's see here. We got uh, 1 John chapter 2 is what we're doing on Monday nights with our channel members and if you don't join us on monday nights when i invite you to do that as well um there's so many things here in this chapter that are very important and we, we went through it and if you haven't seen monday night last year go back and watch that please uh it'll be a great blessing to you it says here in first john 2 26 these things have i written unto you concerning them that seduce you now i think that's a strange word to seduce you but that's not necessarily in a in a physical sense, I don't think that's what that means at all. I think that means in a spiritual sense. There is a spiritual seduction that happens in the world of theology, and I think that what these people are doing, these hill songs and all these other folks, uh, what they're doing is nothing short of spiritual seduction. They're trying to seduce God's people. Matter of fact, if you just go in your Bible and type in the word seduce, you will find uh, that in Matthew 13, there's there's going to be, uh, excuse me, Mark 13, Jesus Christ talks about the tribulation, and he says, for false Christ and false prophets shall rise and shall show signs and wonders to seduce if it were possible, even the elect uh, even goes on. I mean, you know, Revelation chapter number two uh, speaks about in the church, there's a seduction. He says, Revelation chapter two, this is talking about, uh, about Jezebel. I have a few things against thee because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess to teach and to seduce my servants 
to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed to idols. We're going to talk about this Jezebel spirit for a little while tonight and the wicked seduction, the spiritual seduction that this Hillsong organization has committed against the body of Christ. These are not the good guys. These are not some misunderstood people who meant well. I would say that the the entire thing from the founding till now of Hillsong has been nothing more than a, a nefarious scandal, a con job propagated against the body of Jesus Christ. These people are not Christians. This is a wicked organization run by wicked do-good people. And I, I say that on purpose, wicked do-gooders. That's what they are. They are wicked do-gooders. They are from hell. The things that they preach are from hell. The lives that they live are from hell. And thank God that these people are taking a good hit right now. I'm thankful for that. Now, a lot of people will say, well, Brother Spencer, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. You shouldn't be that way about these people. No, I should. I should. And if you are not against Hillsong, you are either dreadfully ignorant of Bible doctrine or you're not saved. Okay, let me just put it to you that way. And I'm, I'm just going to throw it out there just so everybody can understand where we're going with this. If you think Hillsong is just a bunch of good people and this is a, and Brother Spencer just being a Pharisee, then you are either dreadfully ignorant of Bible doctrine or you're not saved. Hmm. Pick, pick one. Which one do you want? I don't see how anybody can watch our Third Adam series. Anybody can understand the, the Bible verses that we go through and, and over and over and try to preach again and again and say that, well, no, nah, I just don't see it that way. Well, you see it wrong because God's word is right. And uh, so we've got several things we're trying to talk about with all this seduction tonight. And uh, But before we get into that, I want to just pr try to promote something to you in, in the wake of talking about bad music we're going to try to promote some good music tonight Thank uh you. we had brother alberico come to our church ron alberico yes, sir. and uh, he's he's sick but he's uh he's still in it for the for the lord and uh he he's done a lot of cds and we've got 10 of these cds of the alberico family and uh they've been uh, these have been produced by faith music missions are good stuff uh brother alberico is a great singer he's a nice mm -hmm. guy uh we're going to give away 10 cds tonight to whoever makes a donation in the live chat or in the paypal during the live stream here. So here we go. 10 people tonight. Uh, Brother Levi is going to take your name down if you make a donation. I think there's been a th three who've made a donation already. So let's go ahead and get them in there too, Levi. And at the end of the live stream, like we normally do, we will do a drawing. We've got, uh, let's see here, we've got fundamental hymns. We've got fundamental God, fundamental hymns. Uh, everything's fundamental on this. Fundamental gospel. And basically all he does is just sing hymns on this stuff. And uh, a lot of, just a lot of real good, rich, uh, godly music for you guys to enjoy. And Anybody who makes a donation in the live chat or in the PayPal tonight, uh, we'll put your name in a drawing for these CDs, and that will be wonderful. So go ahead and make uh, make a donation, and uh, we appreciate that very much, and thank you for that. So uh, when we come back, we're going to take a quick break. When we come back, uh, we are going to talk to you about Hillsong, and I'm going to give you the news updates, and then I'm going to give you five main reasons why I oppose Hillsong, not just the music, but at the organization as a whole, I say is bad. And so we're going to give you five main reasons why we oppose Hillsong. And I hope that you stick around and enjoy it. Watch it all the way to the very end. If you haven't smitten the like button yet, please do so. Smite your like button. If you don't, uh, then then you like Hillsong. Amen. That's for <laughs> that's for certain. Amen. If you like Hillsong, uh, then... Uh, then I, then you that's evidenced by you not like hitting the like button. So hit the like button, guys, and we appreciate you, and we will be right back. Hey guys, Spencer here. I've got a great, exciting new book for you guys that you're going to absolutely love. Introducing the Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal. This is a great tool that we put together for you guys so that you can help deepen your understanding of the Word of God. In this book, we put several very helpful quotes about studying the Bible. We've even put a few charts in there about a bird's eye view of the Bible. And then we've even listed Bible verses by topic. Several of these topics include what does the Bible say about the Bible? What does the Bible say about Jesus Christ? What does the Bible say about the Holy Spirit, the church, witnessing, and even prayer, salvation, and other issues like that? 
Uh, man, this is gonna be a great help to you. You're gonna love this tool. We even put a section in this book on how to study the Bible, a little guide we put together for you guys, just to give you some pointers and some tips in your own personal Bible study. And the rest of the book is line pages for your own personal journaling. You can put in there the things that God has spoken to you about, some of the things that you've seen from the Word of God, and you have the tool now to document all that yourself. And I'm sure this thing will be a great blessing to you. It is available now on Amazon. There's a link in the description of this video. And I, folks, I know, I know that you will love this. So get one for yourself, for your family, for a friend, and it'll be a great blessing to you. Remember, Doctrine Matters Bible Study Journal, now available on Amazon, and we know that you will absolutely love it. God bless you, friend, and remember, doctrine matters. And don't you forget it either. <laughs> God bless you, friend. All right, guys, thank you for watching tonight. Hit your like button if you will, and uh, we appreciate you guys uh, watching tonight. I don't see Cheryl in the live chat tonight. I don't see her at all, so uh, we're going we're gonna to survive without her tonight, <laughs> I reckon. So anyway, um, Hillsong has, um, as, as you guys know, Carl Lentz was fired from Hillsong. He was probably the number two, um, probably the most popular guy that Hillsong had as far as a pastor in New York City. And they fired him because he was having an affair over 2020 and uh, was a big mess. Uh, this guy was a celebrity pastor, you know, Justin Bieber pastor type guy, hipster. And now it turned out the man who fired him had an indiscretion, uh, seemed like maybe a year before uh, they fired Carl Lentz. So there you go. Um, and Brian, what happened with Brian Houston is that Brian Houston uh, takes anxiety prescription medicine and for whatever reason, and uh, which isn't necessarily a sin in itself, uh, but he was in a hotel with a bunch of people taking prescription drugs and drinking alcohol, got way too, too hammered or whatever, uh, knocked on a woman's hotel room door, went into that hotel room for 40 minutes and came out. Now, Brian Houston and the woman who whose hotel room he went into said that they were both too intoxicated to remember anything that happened, and uh, but they both insist that nothing happened. Uh, guys, I think anybody with more than a room temperature IQ understands what happened in that room, and, uh, and this is grounds for being dismissed. This is grounds for being fired um, as far as ministry. Now, here's the thing: when you look at when you look at leaders in a church and people that are, uh, you know, want to be bishops, you have to find out that uh, being a bishop is a good thing. Nothing wrong with wanting to be a bishop, but the first qualification of being a bishop is that he must be blameless. Uh, you know, if a guy's got some major scandal over his head, especially one like this, then biblically he's not qualified to lead a ministry. And that's, that's just as much Bible as John 3.16 for sure. And uh, that, so Hillsong is now has fired Brian Houston, and there's so many other things going on right now. And this, uh, this Australian website, Crikey, has been blowing these people up. And, uh, and there's, a, there's a transcription of all this stuff. Uh, the Hillsong meeting that's happened. Um, there is a uh, man, just all kinds of stuff here. So let me just read this. This is a a statement from the board of Hillsong, uh, which went out yesterday, March 2022. Dear Church, we would like to advise you that Pastor Brian Houston has resigned as global senior pastor of Hillsong Church, and the board has accepted his resignation. We understand there will be much emotion at this news, and we all share these feelings. Irrespective of the circumstances around this, we can all agree that Brian and Bobby have served God faithfully over many decades and that their ministry has resulted in millions of people across the world being impacted by the power, grace, and love of Jesus Christ. Hillsong Church was birthed out of Brian and Bobby's obedience and committed to the call of God, and we are extremely grateful for all that Brian and Bobby have given to build his house. We ask you to continue to pray for them and the entire Houston family during this challenging time. As you can appreciate this is still there is still much to be done and our church leadership continues seeking God for his wisdom as we set the course for the future we acknowledge that God or excuse me that change is needed we have committed to an independent review of our government structure and processes understanding that this is a time of humble reflection 
and we are committed to doing what is necessary to ensure God is honored and our eyes are fixed on Jesus. We value your ongoing support and prayers. We are also praying for our entire church family at this time, Hillsong Church Global and Australian Boards, which there's nothing wrong with this statement per se. There's just it's not a whole lot here that I can criticize. Uh, I think Brian Houston should have resigned. Uh, quite frankly, I think he should have been fired uh, for what he did. And, uh, and the thing is, uh, Hillsong, I, I'm in contact with a lot of people from Australia. Uh, we, ha- we have a lot of people down under that watch our channel, Levi. And, and I'm thankful. I, I love Australian people. I, Australian people are like British rednecks, man. That, that whole, that whole country was founded because uh, England had a bunch of people they didn't know what to do with so they just dumped them off over there mm-hmm. those people are awesome I love Australian people they're they're like they're they're like my uh, my uh, crazy redneck cousins that we have <laughs> you know what I mean and uh, so that's that's what they are but they're they're wonderful people but they all tell me that uh, that Hillsong is one of the greatest hindrances to the gospel in mm-hmm. that continent and uh, you know once they get into Hillsong stuff, that man, that you can't even talk to them about Jesus and sin and heaven and hell anymore because all they want to talk about is, oh, this worship experience that we had. Oh, it was so powerful, this worship experience, which I don't know what accent that was. But, I don't uh, uh, Yeah, I'm a little emotional tonight. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. And, um, but, but, you know, here's the deal. This is what's, what's going on now. This was reported. Uh, this one was reported today. This one was reported yesterday. Um, here's... Let's, they're just an excerpt of the meeting, and um, and but here's what they're doing now. This is what the article said: Hillsong's U.S. operations threaten to unravel in the face of scandal as the organization clamps down on dissent. Following Hillsong founder Brian Houston's shock resignation in the wake of a scandal of alleged inappropriate treatment of women, the church's U.S. operations are in jeopardy. Uh, let's see here. It says. Uh, um, let me get off this right here. Oh, please don't do this to me right now. Anyway, um, but it's basically saying, let me just read the first paragraph. This is one of those pay-to-read websites. I hate those things. The Hillsong me- Mega Church is now threatening to unravel in the United States in the wake of a mounting scandals led yesterday to the tumultuous reg- resignation of founder Brian Houston. This is an ominous sign for organization given that the U.S., home of the evangelical me- megachurch phenomenon, has become Hills- had become Hillsong's de facto headquarters at and the center of gravity for a worldwide church conglomerate taking in 27 countries and a global reach of some 150,000 followers. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, the, really, if it had not been for, I, I think, for the American money and the American contemporary gospel music industry, and I did not say ministry, I said industry, mm-hmm. the money that was has been pumping through this stream, this revenue stream here. I don't think Hillsong would have had the funding to do anything that they did. But uh, Western Christians are drunk on seductive mystery religion worship with Christianese lyrics. They're drunk off that stuff, and they won't. They they just can't get enough of it. And so that is what is going on there. But what has happened is that um, Hillsong has become a place where. Uh, just people just congregate, and what they do is they try their very best to just get into, you know, worshiping and and, and all kinds of crazy stuff about uh, in you in, in a mystery religion way. And there's there's just so many people uh, that that are getting wrapped up in this. I mean, Prostestia is even saying here there's another there's a major sex scandal. The Hillsong pastor gets promoted after confessing an affair uh, last year before global senior pastor Brian Houston resigned from Hillsong. He pulled the trigger and shut down Hillsong Dallas scattering the congregants into the wind in the wake of a series of scandals that plagued the church. And uh, it says here, in early January of 2021, Pastor Reed Bogard, who helped found Hillsong New York City and Hillsong L.A., was up until uh, the this point the senior pastor at Hillsong Dallas released a short uh, Kurt pre-recorded message during the January 3rd service announcing that he and his pastrick's wife were resigning. Um it says here that uh, you know basically they, they were using church funds to do all kinds of just crazy stuff. And it says here, um, let's see, let me read this. It wasn't all about money and financials, apparently, according to David Harker of Crikey, who obtained 30 pages of internal Hillsong investigation documents by law firm Zucker, Gore, Brandis, and Crossman, who were tasked with investigating this incident last year. Bogard engaged in an extramarital affair 
clergy abuse, uh, sexual abuse back in 2013 when he was Pastor Hillsong in New York City. It says here, a year later, the woman in question, who was a staffer of the church, confessed to a board member that she'd engaged in an affair with Bogard. Hillsong's higher-ups investigated the claims. The report noted that the church leadership failed to conduct any meaningful inquiry at the time of the incident, with everyone assuming it must have been consensual despite a powerful church leader and a young lower staff person. Despite the sexual encounter being established and known, it was never made public or told to the congregation. It was not disqualifying to these people. Uh, Bogard was promoted from the church planning pastor at Hillsong, New York City, to senior pastor at Hillsong, Dallas. And uh, in 2020, the woman came forward with new allegations that her, their first sexual encounter wasn't consensual at all, but that Bogard raped her and that she told him no. This prompted Hillsong to hire the firm to investigate, <clears throat> who in turn divulged, quote, no one at any time ever probed for more information to try to discern how one of the most powerful men in the, in the New York church um, could have found himself in a sexual relationship with a young, vulnerable junior staff member, and no one appears to have questioned whether the meaningful consent was possible, let alone present, given the obvious power dynamic. The investigation. The investigators further mentioned that the relationship seemed devoid of intimacy and instead was about reinforcing the power imbalance he had over here, her. Bogart also, Bogart, Bogart also used his power and position as pastor to force her to sign a confidential, confi, I can't talk today, confidentiality <laughs> agreement with non-disparagement clause to ensure she would not reveal their relationship to anyone. Well, who in the world makes those things? That is, I would. Why would you ever sign anything like that? <laughs> the firm concluded that ultimately it's impossible to say whether or not the initial sexual encounter was rape, but that there was such a heightened sense of power dynamics that Bogard clearly took advantage of and that Hillsong investigators failed to account for this, noting that, quote, the fact that no church leader appears to have even considered this issue is cause for concern. And uh, Bogart says that while he has no memory of her saying no to him during this first encounter, that he claims it was, he was, he claims, listen to this, he claims he was very drunk and had lost some of his memory from that night. The attorney investigating Bogart concluded that he seemed less than entirely reliable and forthcoming during his interview. It, if I were to say... Everybody at Hillsong is a bunch of drunk fornicators. I wouldn't be wrong. If I were to say there is a large amount of people who are, who are in leadership at Hillsong who are sexually harassing and, and doing sexual assault on women and cheating on their wives and getting drunk and going into hotel rooms, I would not be wrong. Hillsong is Hillsong. Mm. Hillsong is Hillsong. And I'm going to say it again because I want to say it. Hillsong is Hillsong. And I want to tell you that there are five major reasons why I stand against Hillsong. Before we go any farther, I want to tell you that uh, it was sometime around 2018 that I started studying Hillsong and looking into them. And uh, what I did was I would just go and I'd put my headphones in, I'd go to the gym and work out for an hour and a half or so. And while I was there, I would listen to these people. I would listen to their sermons. I would listen to their, uh, to their songs. I would try to understand what, what is going on here? Is it, is this good? Is this bad? And I had an inclination that they were bad, but they were really bad. And one day I got home from the gym, I was wearing a bright blue shirt and I walked into my house and I told my wife, I said, look, I'm going to, I'm going to put I'm going to take this phone right here. As a matter of fact, it was this exact phone. And I said, I need to record a video, and I need you guys to go upstairs for just a few minutes and let me have the living room by myself. I, and I put this up on a triphone, and my family stepped out for a few minutes, and I filmed a video, edited it, and posted it on the Internet, and it was called The Hillsong Generation. That video went, by many standards, viral. And uh, today it has 1.1 million views on it. It's a little bit dated uh, before we go any farther, I want to play that video for you. The video that made Spencer Smith's channel take off, the very first viral hit that Spencer Smith had, The Hillsong Generation. I want you guys to watch that at this time. The Bible teaches that in the end days, an apostasy will sweep this earth unlike anything ever seen before. Ladies and gentlemen, we are living in these days now. 
There is a generation that will produce churches that are completely indistinguishable from the nightclubs and bars of the world, yet they still claim to be Christians. The music, the light, the crowds. It looks like a rock concert. And the lines around the block are enough to make any nightclub envious. But this, this is church. There is a generation of Christians that are completely indistinguishable from the lost heathen world in their personal appearance, yet they still claim to be Christians. We we'll walk down this runway. <laughs> Bucket list. He seems to revel in the spotlight, but Lentz would prefer you focus on his preaching rather than his wardrobe. He says he's been blocked from visiting inmates because prison staff thought he looked more like a criminal than a cleric. There is a generation of Christians that simply cannot give a straight answer to even the most basic Bible question, yet they still claim to be Christians. Do you believe that only Christians can be in relationship with God? No, I believe that when Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, in the way I read that, Jesus said, he is the he's the road marker he's the map so i think god loves people so much that whether they accept or reject him he's still gracious and he's still moving there is a generation of christians that when they worship it sounds nothing short of utter confusion yet they still claim to be christians There's a generation of Christians that actually cuss while they're worshiping God, and yet they still claim to be Christians. Even when the fight seems lost, I'll praise you. Even when it hurts like hell, I'll praise you. Not only that, there is a generation of Christians that will put half-naked people on stage in front of their church while they're worshiping and still look you in the face and claim that they're Christians. There is a generation of Christians that lives such immoral, loose lives that even the world is taken back that these people claim to be Christians, and yet they still claim to be Christians. There is a generation of Christians that won't stand on any social issues of the day, especially abortion, and yet they still claim to be Christians. Strong, huge millennial crowds but it's still evangelical. So where do you stand on social issues that, that young people are particularly passionate about, like gay marriage, abortion? Like, how do you address those types of things? So it's not a sin in your church to have an abortion? Um, that's the kind of conversation we would have, finding out your story, where you're from, what Work you believe. Work through it, like talk yeah, about Yeah, I mean, God's the judge. People have to live to their own convictions, and I think if I have to tell you, uh, there is a generation of Christians that will not stand against homosexuality, and yet they still claim to be Christians. Are gay men and women welcome in the church? Absolutely. We have a lot of gay men and women in our church, and I pray we always do. It's not our place to tell anyone how they should live. It's, that's their journey. Every article I've read about you guys says he declined to discuss gay marriage. Yeah, it's a misquote because I do discuss it, just not the way people want me to. When it comes to homosexuality, I refuse to let uh, another human being or a, a, a immediate moment uh, dictate how we approach it. Jesus was in the thick of uh, an era where homosexuality, just like it is today, was wildly prevalent. And I'm still waiting for someone to show me the quote where Jesus addressed it on the record in front of people. You won't find it because he never did. There is a generation of Christians 
and they are the first ones in history, but they are actually accepted and adored by the LGBTQ crowd, and yet they still claim to be Christians. Next guest has been compared to everyone from Adele to Amy Winehouse. Her new CD just debuted at number one. She's amazing. Here to perform Still Rolling Stones, please welcome Lauren Daigle. <laughs> There is a generation of Christians that claims that they love God and respect Him for who He is, yet use wildly irreverent terms when speaking about Him, and yet they still claim to be Christians. And at that point, it was my eighth year. <laughs> and so, so I was time. like, okay, Lord, I got you, boo. And so I just kind of went into a little season of rest. And Ladies and gentlemen, it's time that Christians wake up and realize that Satan is not walking around with red horns and a pitchfork. Satan's wearing a leather jacket and he's standing behind a pulpit. And it's also time that God's people realize there is a huge difference between Bible-believing Christianity and this Hillsong stuff, which is nothing more than a mixture of modernistic Protestant Pentecostalism, New Age religion, and charismatic apostasy. But then again, who am I to judge? I'm just a guy with a Bible. All right, guys, that was the Hillsong Generation. That video went viral years ago, and we laid it out for you. I, I'm not in the business of just saying, <clears throat> you know, Hillsong is bad. I, I mean, Spencer Smith keeps the receipts. I, I, if I'm going to make a claim, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And uh, you guys have to understand what I'm saying. I, I am not sitting here as some fuddy-duddy with an upright piano singing four-part harmony, telling you Hillsong is bad. I'm sitting here as a Christian who understands Bible doctrine and understands that the Bible, what the Bible is teaching is not what these people are teaching. And the fruit of Hillsong is so wretchedly horrible. Even in 2018, when Carl Lentz was at his peak, when I made that video, he had just gotten involved with Justin Bieber taking shots together. There was a segment in there. I don't know if you noticed, there's a segment in there that I had to cut out because of a copyright claim. And it was it was a uh, TMZ-type YouTube channel talking about Carl Lentz and Justin Bieber taking shots at the bar together. I mean, those those two dudes are sitting there just down in whiskeys in, some, in, some, uh, in a bar. And after they're doing all that... Justin Bieber takes his shirt off and starts dancing with women in the bar, and Carl Lentz sitting there just laughing at him. Okay, Justin, if Justin Bieber is saved, then everybody's saved. Mm. Justin Shoot. Bieber is going to hell. Justin Bieber and Kanye are not born again. These people are not Christians. They are into all this Hillsong nonsense. It is wickedness to the nth degree. This is an end times deception. These people cuss in the middle of their their songs. It's written to the lyrics. Profanity. What am I supposed to do with that as a Christian? Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to stand against it. And I'm going to let people know what I think for sure. So here's let's do this. What I want to do is I want to take just a quick break. I want to play something for you. I want to remind you again, we're doing a raffle for 10 CDs tonight. If you guys want to participate in that, please make a chat a donation in the chat, or you can make a donation to the PayPal. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to get into the Bible, and I'm going to give you five reasons why I oppose Hillsong. We have showed you the Hillsong Generation video, which is available on our YouTube channel. You can go check that out as well. Um, but I'm going to give you five reasons when we come back why I oppose Hillsong. God bless you, friend. 
Well, hey guys, your friend Spencer here. We have had our website up for a couple months now, independentbaptist.church, and we've got reports from all over the country of people saying, you know, we got out of our bad church and we didn't even realize it, but there was a really solid Bible-believing, Bible-preaching church just right down the road from our house. We had no idea. And this website has been a tool that God has allowed to be used uh, for His glory, getting people into a better place. And uh, we want to encourage you to go revisit this website. We've done several new additions and updates to it, and it is a really good looking website. And we are constantly updating the database in this website. We have churches that we're adding and all kinds of things like that. And so we thank God for the opportunity to help you in this matter. Independentbaptist.church is your website for finding a good local Bible believing, Bible preaching church in your neighborhood. So go visit independentbaptist.church now and God bless you as you search for a good new church. Hey guys. All right, I'm going to take care of a couple people in the live chat real quick. I'm going to get rid of that guy. And uh, I don't like him at all. And a couple others in here. And, um, man, what a blessing they are to me. So we're going to get rid of this. some of these losers that like to pop in on here and say things. I, you know, I don't, um, I don't really mind being asked questions. I don't mind that. But when you get oh, on dude. there and start just railing, uh, you're gone, bro. So um, that's what we're going to do. Let me do this. This segment... I will talk to you, give you five major reasons why I oppose Hillsong. And for many of you, this may be just a review of some things. And some of you may watch this and you have never seen our Third Adam documentaries, which are, of course, we have these canvas prints on the wall behind me. Uh, it's Third Adam 1 right there, Third Adam 2, and Third Adam 3. And, of course, we've got Third Adam 3X, which is over four and a half hours long. And you guys can go enjoy those at, uh, at some other time. Go watch Third Adam. It will show you what we're talking about. But Hillsong is going down, no doubt. And I think they're on the way out. And for somebody like me to stand up, stand up and celebrate that, many people would misunderstand why. Well, I'm going to tell you why, give you five good reasons why. The number one reason why I am going to oppose Hillsong and why I am not a fan of Hillsong is because, number one, Hillsong preaches a false gospel. They preach a false gospel. I want to go in the Bible to the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15, and I want to talk to you about what the gospel is. The Bible says here, 1 Corinthians 15, One more, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and wherein you stand, by which you also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preach unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. The Bible has three main elements for the gospel, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But here's the thing that we have to understand is that it's a lot of people, when they speak of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, there's one word that they seem to leave out of their gospel presentation. And I'll show you the word. It is right here. The word sins. The word sins is a very important aspect of the gospel because Christ did not die so that you wouldn't be lonely anymore. Christ didn't die to heal you per se. Now, there are verses in the Bible that says, if by his stripes we are healed. That's exactly right. And you can be healed spiritually, but why? Why? Why do you need to be healed? Because you're broken. Well, why are you broken? You're broken because you are a sinner. You have sinned before God. And the problem with Hillsong is that they never preach against sin. They never preach against wickedness. Matter of fact, they, they, they coddle it. They are friends with it. You saw Carl Lentz, the things that he said about certain social issues in that video. He, he did not even say anything negative about that. He stood up and said, well, you know... Yeah, well, you know, you got to live by your own convictions and, you, you know, God's the judge. I'm not the judge. When the truth be told that 
yes, God is the judge, and we as messengers have been declared, have been given the responsibility to pass on that judgment and say, hey, God said this. God said this about sin, not only just any sin, your sin. God said this about your sin, and you're under the judgment of God. But they don't preach that, do they? They don't stand up and say, you, you, you know, if you're a drunkard and you're going to hell, you're, you're, you're destroying your family and, uh, you are, you, you know, you're, you're a pervert messing around with a bunch of junk on the internet and you're sorry and you're got a hot temper and you're, you're an angry old crazy man. You need to get saved. You're heathen. They would never say anything like that. They get up and say, well, you, you know, the Lord loves you and he wants you, he wants to come and work in your life and, and you don't have to be angry no more and you don't have to be sad no more and you, you don't have to be that hurt little child inside of you anymore. That's not the gospel. You know, that's, that's new age gobbledygook. I mean, there was that old song David Phelps sang years ago and, uh, uh, you know, now more than ever, I cherish the cross. Does the hurt child inside you? Uh, there was a lyric in there that said something like that. I'm going to tell you, th listen, it's not that you have some hurt child inside of you that needs to be healed and loved on by Jesus. That's not necessarily the truth of the gospel. The truth of the gospel, according to the Bible, is that you are a sinner, that you are wicked, that, that you have missed the mark, and that you are, it's not that you just are made a few mistakes here and there. It is that, it is that you in your very core are a sinner. You are wicked as, the, as, as, as hell itself, and you are going to hell. That is the beginning of the gospel. Amen. Matter of fact, let's just go to Romans 1. I mean, he talks about this. It says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth and unrighteousness. When did Carl Lentz ever preach that? When did Brian Houston ever preach that? When, when do these people believe this? They don't say this stuff. Romans 1, 21, because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened. People that are, that are unsaved are not looking for the Lord. They are trying to run away from God as fast as they can. <clears throat> and if you don't believe that, go in the middle of your workplace and pull out a Bible and just start reading it and just watch people scatter like roaches when the lights come on. That's what they do. And it says here that, um, <clears throat> I mean, let's just go on here. It talks about mankind's uh, wicked condition. <coughs> Excuse me. Verse 29, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wicked, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whisperers, uh, backbiters, haters of God, uh, despiteful, proud boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And it even says, I mean, just, just look here. It says, therefore thou art inexcusable, O man, that, uh, whosoever thou art that judgest. For wherein thou judgest another, thou condemnest thyself. For thou that judgest doest the same things. And so what he's doing here is he's, Paul is laying the groundwork. Everybody's in trouble with God. It says here in verse number five, but after thy hardness and impenitent heart treasures up to thyself wrath against the day of wrath and re revelation of the righteous judgment of God who will render every man according to his deeds. And, uh, and I mean, that is, that is the language. You're, you're treasuring up to yourself a uh, wrath. Your, your hardness and impenitent heart, you're treasuring up to thyself wrath. And Jonathan Edwards in his sermon, The Sins in the Hands of an Angry God, he, he, he likened it unto a dam holding back water, and you're literally pouring more water into that, into that reservoir, more water and more water. Every time you sin, you're pouring more water in there. And, and you don't realize that one day the dam will break. And all of that water is going to come out. And I've seen I've seen videos of, of flash floods. And and uh, there was a uh, there was an Italian dam right before World War 
two that uh, man it was like there was a whole town built right on the very bottom of a dam and and, and I, the engineers were saying this thing's going to go this thing's going to go and it went and this and I don't even know the name of it but the whole town just about was wiped away you couldn't even find these people they were gone there was no bodies there was no buildings there was nothing but destruction and devastation and a sinner in his wickedness and in his in his in his unrighteous state is sitting there every day pouring more water behind that dam and pouring more and pouring more and 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 it's not that they don't know it they they don't care and God has to do an awakening work in their life to awaken them and show them and draw them to himself and to plea with them. And, and, and I like the old phrase, no conviction, no conversion. I like that phrase because the Holy Ghost has to awaken a man and tell a man, you are lost, you are undone, you are wicked, and draw that man to himself. And apart from that, they have no hope. Now, the Calvinists always talk about that, that that's irresistible grace. I don't know if I would necessarily it's irresistible grace because the King James Bible says you've resisted the Holy Ghost. And so I think you can resist that. But I'm going to tell you, a man who lives in his wickedness and lives in his unrighteousness is literally pouring more and more of the wrath of God upon himself. And one day all of that will come out. The Bible even says here in Revelation chapter number 20 about the great white throne. It says right here, I saw the dead stand before great, small and dead, uh, small and I saw the dead, small and great stand before God. The books were open. What do you think those books are? I would say it's the book of life. <clears throat> I would say it's probably the books of the Bible, and it's probably the God's record book. I mean, God is keeping perfect, perfect score. God is keeping perfect score. <clears throat> you know, just the other day I had to go sit down with people at my bank and uh, apparently I took an Uber ride sometime late last year. <laughs> and uh, some joker was uh, took my card and and had apparently still been taking my card even up till this last month. And and I didn't realize it but and I didn't catch it. I mean it was just it was just like $4 every other day, something like that. That's how they do it. And uh and so but the thing was, I mean it was an Uber ride and and I, you know, I mean I thought Uber vetted these people but apparently <laughs> not. I'll never use an Uber ever again. Uber is and and their company didn't do anything anything about it. They don't care. Uber is trash. You people are garbage and I am never going to use your services again. But they, uh, one of the Uber riders started taking stuff, and I didn't catch it. I didn't catch it until recently, and I had to go sit down and file a fraud report with my bank. And turned out that that, that over over the course of six months, they had taken uh, they had taken a, a decent amount of money, a noticeable amount of money out of my account, and my bank refunded it to me. And and uh, they're doing an investigation. <clears throat> but the truth is. Even though they pulled just a little bit every month, that was how they that's that's how they got it past me. But the truth is, it doesn't matter the size of your sin, God saw it. Mm. God keeps perfect records. God doesn't miss anything you do. Every little thought, every wicked internet search, every cuss word under your breath, mm. every perverse thought that went through your mind, and every, every little substance you put in your body, everything you saw, no matter how small, and no matter where you were and what you were doing at the time, God saw it, and God has a perfect record of all that. And God is keeping score. And all of that one day at the judgment seat of Christ, or excuse me, at the great white throne judgment, not the judgment seat of Christ, all of that's going to come out, and you will be declared guilty before God, and you will die and go to hell unless you receive Jesus Christ as your Savior. Romans chapter number 3 speaks about how wicked man is, but here's what it says here. I mean, it even says they're all gone out of the way. Everybody's become unprofitable. There's none that doeth good. No, not one. This is not the gospel that Hillsong preaches. Hillsong does not stand up and preach on the horrors of hell and the great white throne judgment. Hillsong will never stand against that stuff and never say that kind of stuff. They will never get up and hurt the self-esteem of these people in this congregation because that is not the business they're into. That's not the gospel that they preach. And it even says this, you can be saved. It says, but now the righteousness of God without the law is manifested, being witnessed by the law and the prophets even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. The illustration there is that man is unrighteous. There is no 
righteousness in in man at all. No way. So the only way a man can be righteous is if God himself gives his very righteousness to that sinner. Mm. That's the only way that can be saved. And it says here, the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ. Notice this. It says unto all, it's given unto them if they receive Christ as their Savior. And then it says, upon all them that believe. It's it's like the example of, okay, I'm going to hand you a T-shirt or hand you a robe. That would be the righteousness of God. God handed you that robe. But the Bible says it's given unto you, but then it's given upon you, meaning that God himself will even cover you himself Mm. with that that robe of righteousness. That's what you got to do to be saved. And the Bible says here in Romans chapter number 10, the verse number 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says here in Romans verse uh, 10 verse 13, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. That is the point. That is the gospel about receiving Christ because you are dead in your sins. You are wicked. You are going to hell but Jesus will offer you his hand of redemption if you will just take it today. And the gospel that Hillsong preaches has nothing to do with that. It says, well, you're just a hurt little boy, and Jesus can come be your buddy. And and I'm sorry, when you're not preaching against sin, you are not preaching the gospel. When you are not preaching against sin, you are not preaching the the gospel of Jesus Christ. And according to that, that, that video we just showed you, the Hillsong Generation, the people on The View point blank asked him to his face about a certain particular sin and like some slippery eel. He wiggled his way out of that because he's a con man. He's not saved. He is a hater of God. He is a false teacher. He is out of hell. He is going to hell. Carl Lentz is an agent of Satan. He is a Luciferian tyrant. He is a monster. He is a freak. He is not saved. And thank God that Hillsong is going down the drain. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And if you don't like that, then take me off your list too. I don't care. (laughs) But I'm against Hillsong because they are the enemies of the gospel. They're a bunch of crazies is what they are. And this is just point number one. (laughs) I I got four more points, Levi. Oh, goodness. <laughs> Go ahead and brew you a pot of coffee, folks, because we're getting ready. Let me say also, number two, I'm against Hillsong. I'm going to go a little bit out of order today. Not only because they preach a false gospel, but they pervert the very holiness of God. Look what it says right here. In Galatians chapter 1, verse 6, and we're talking about they pervert that not only do they preach a false gospel, but they pervert the very nature and holiness of God. It says, I marvel that you're so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Wait a minute. I thought there was all one gospel, and I thought all churches preached the gospel, and I thought everybody just believes in Jesus, and that's just it. I thought Catholics and Lutherans and Presbyterians and and Independent Baptists and and Pentecostals all believed the same gospel. If you believe that, I've got some oceanfront oceanfront property in Wyoming I want to sell you, man. (laughs) You're crippled too high for crutches if you believe that. That's exactly right. There is the gospel of Jesus Christ, and then there is another gospel. There is a false gospel, and Hillsong preaches that false gospel. And it says here, which is, uh, it says verse number 7, another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and would, notice that word right there. It says the word pervert. They would pervert the gospel of Christ. The Bible talks about gospel perverts. And I think Hillsong is a bunch of gospel perverts. Mm. They perverted the gospel, and they're perverting the very holiness of God. Now, here's the thing that I want to show you. There's a word called despiseth, okay? Um, Let's see here, despiseth there in the Bible. Let's see here. Despiseth. Now, 
I want to tell you that when, when God puts his stamp on a person, when God saves a person and declares them righteous, declares them holy before God, God literally imputes his very nature to that person. And we talk about Christ-likeness. Well, what is Christ? Who is Christ? Christ is holy. The very holy nature of God is imputed to your account. And that should work out as some form of holiness in a practical way. Now, there are people out there, and they're arguing lordship salvation, and I, I don't even know what they're talking about half the time because it seems like they're all saying the same thing. They're just saying it a little bit different. But let me just tell you this. The Bible says, 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things become new, meaning that you'll have a new walk, you'll have a new life, you'll have a new, uh, you'll have a new position with God, and you'll have a new disposition practically in the world. Uh, you will be different if God saves you. You will literally be born again again. And it doesn't mean you'll be sinlessly perfect. It doesn't mean <clears throat> that you'll never do anything wrong. It doesn't mean that you won't struggle with your flesh. But what it means is that you, you as a Christian, will be different to some degree. And we could argue the degrees and we can argue all that. But the thing is that there will be a desire. There will be a desire for holiness in a person mm. if they truly get saved. Now, when I got saved, I was listening to rock and roll. But God gave me a hunger for something better. Do you understand what I'm saying, guys? And the Bible says here, 1 Thessalonians 4, 7, For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. God's called us to that. And I, I can feel that calling in my life. And look what it says in verse number 8. He therefore, he therefore that despiseth. Now that's an interesting word, despiseth. In the King James Bible, let me teach you this. In the King James Bible, when there's an E-T-H at the end of that word, that is in, in grammar, that's called an infinitive, meaning it's perpetual thing. Uh, he that seeketh, it shall find. He that knocketh, it shall open. He that asketh, shall receive. Okay, that's, that's, what, that's what the King James Bible translates it that way because it's an infinitive word, meaning it's a perpetual thing. It says, he therefore that despiseth. Well, what's despiseth? What are they talking about? What's the context teach? He that despiseth. The call unto holiness. That's exactly what that verse is talking about. He that despiseth the call of God unto holiness. It says, you don't despise man, despiseth not man, but God, who hath given unto us his Holy Spirit. Here's the deal. If I can get up and I can say, Taking prescription drugs and getting drunk and going into a hotel room with a woman that's not your wife is wickedness. If I can say that, and that absolutely irritates the fire out of you, and you get on your little Twitter feed and you say, Spencer Smith is a legalist. I can't believe him. Who does he think he is? He's a legalist saying that you can't drink alcohol. And who is this Who is this legalist Pharisee? Who does he think he's judging me? Who does the, who, wow. And it is rail on Spencer Smith for the outrageous, outlandish thing that he said about, oh, he said these terrible things about people. He's judging everybody. <laughs> if that's you, you don't hate Spencer Smith. You hate Jesus Christ. That's, good. That's exactly what this verse is saying. If I get up and say Christians ought not try to, uh, there's no such thing as Christian rock and roll, and that just completely irritates the fire out of you so that you've got to go and make a YouTube channel just to expose Spencer Smith for his legalistic, pharisaical rants, then, then are you even saved? Like, I mean, for example, I'm not a Calvinist. I, I, am, I am not a Calvinist. But when I hear, when I hear a Calvinist get up and, and preach against the world, the flesh, and the devil, I say amen. Mm. I mean, I remember you, there was a video years ago. It was a stupid uh, music video called What Does the Fox Say? You remember that? <laughs> yes. You remember that oh, dumb man. video? I watched an Assembly oh. of God pastor get up and in front. I mean, he was he was on fire. He was ticked about that video. <laughs> he got up and just, I mean, I'm talking about a big Assembly of God church. Got up and said, that thing's out of hell. That's mm. wickedness. That's stupidity. That is a demonic evil. You know what I did? I said, hey, man, mm. hallelujah. <laughs> you know, he's an Assembly of God guy. I didn't, I, I, what he said was good. <laughs> I thought, praise Jesus. Somebody's saying right. That didn't bother me at all. It bothered me a bit. 
But if I get up and say, you know, y'all not do this, 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 and TikTok is stupid and a bunch of crazy nonsense nuts on there, and uh, all that's wrong and wickedness, and it just sends you into some spiritual tizzy, and you get your feathers all ruffled, the Bible says, he therefore that despiseth what? The call to holiness despiseth not man, but God, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. Now listen. There are some men out there, and, and I'm, I, you know, I have operated in the independent Baptist world for a, a while now, and uh, there's some crazies that call themselves independent Baptists, no doubt. And uh, I've I've parted ways with almost all of that that I know of, and uh, trying to trying to find more ways to part with more of it, and just do my own thing. But uh, I'm gonna tell you, there are some men out there who preach things that I think are dumb. Like I met a man one time, he's a good man, loved God, but he thought if a woman wore a baseball cap, that was that was the same thing as her wearing a miniskirt. He thought that was stupid. He said that was that's a that's man's garment. I thought that you know I just all I could do was laugh at that, you know, because I, I didn't I didn't think that was correct. But but at the same time, I I do appreciate men who challenge my thinking and that kind mm-hmm. of stuff. I mean, I'd rather you be a little bit too tight to where you're a little bit weird than be way too loose. Mm-hmm. I mean, a bunch of people out there with beers in their hands. Sit- I mean, there's guys out there sitting there with, with beers in their hand telling the Internet, Spencer Smith's wrong about theology. <laughs> and forgive me. Forgive me. I, want, I just want to say it, and I want it to be heard across the Internet. If you're a Christian rapper, I don't care what you say about theology. I, I don't take you seriously. You're, you're a, if you don't see a problem with Christian rap, then I don't have any use for you. There's, there's no need to talk. We are not the same, bro. We yo yo you understand no, I'm, you you feel me you 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 smell what I'm stepping in dog we are not the same and I don't care what you say about theology yo dog you understand okay the big dog upstairs you know the one that you you worship you, yo dog you get me we are not the same I don't care what you say you are not my tribe and if that bothers you well. All I'm going to do is point you to these two verses right here. I think, say, people agree with this. Someone in the comment section just posted a minute ago said, my sheep hear my voice, and other will they not follow. Listen, I don't. I do not hear this. This sheep, this sheep right here, this one right here. I can't speak for anybody else, but this one right here. I don't hear my shepherd's voice in a skillet concert. Mm, that's good. And I don't care if you like it. I know. John, I know what John Cooper's saying. I know. I like what John Cooper's saying. John Cooper's. Uh, he's on social issues. John's great. He's got a lot of good stuff to say. I appreciate the things that he's saying, and I have agreed and said Amen. But I'm gonna tell you when his when his when his wife gets up on the platform. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hear the voice of Jesus in that. I do not hear my shepherd's voice in a skillet concert. I don't hear it. I don't Amen. hear my Savior in a skillet concert. That's good. If you don't like that, then look at these verses. God didn't call you to put gauges in your ears and eyeliner and get tattoos for Jesus up and down your arm. God has not called you to that stupidity. Are you insane? That's not, de- I mean, look, all you have to do to know what God said is to not be an idiot and be able to read plain English. Mm. All you have to do, all, I'm going to say it again. We're, we're going deep tonight, baby. <laughs> all you have to do to understand the Bible is not be stupid and learn how to read plain English. <laughs> do you see what the Bible says? For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. If the idea, if the idea of drinking and getting drunk with your church people on a mission trip and going to hotel rooms together, if, if, if Spencer saying that that is wrong bothers you, that you are going to hell when you die. Does that make sense? Does that make sense to anybody? Am I the only one in the world who believes this? No, sir. I'm going to tell you guys, this is a big deal. This is what the, the, the Hillsong, the one of the main reasons I'm against them, these people pervert the very nature of God. They turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. I mean, I'm going to go to the book of Jude here. Let's, uh, let's type in the word lasciviousness here. Um, I'm going to just... 
just do a partial match on this verse. And it's in, it's in the book of Jude, okay? It says there in verse number four of, of Jude, for there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old uh, ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying our only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Let me tell you this, these ungodly men, hey, Brandon, how you doing, Brandon? Brandon Lake, how you doing, bro? Brandon, I know Brandon. It's Brandon, Brandon, Spencer Smith knows. Spencer Smith knows, Brandon. Hey, Brandon, Brandon Lake, I know. Hey, I haven't said anything yet, but I just want you to know that I know. Hallelujah. Ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, meaning that these people say, well, we're under grace so we can do what we want. And that word lascivious means a lewd, lustful lifestyle. These people say, well, I'm just under the grace of God so I can go move in with my boyfriend. You have no idea what the grace of God even is, my friend. These are false teachers that promote this kind of stuff. Romans chapter 6 verse 1 says this, what shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound god forbid meaning that if when you get saved and this is what people who attack once saved always saved are always saying they say well you believe that you can you can you can go live whatever you want to and live however you want and go do whatever and and, and you have a false assurance of your salvation and you think that you can go smoke and drink and do all these things and still go to heaven when you die no i don't believe that at all i believe that if a person truly gets saved they will have a new nature and, and they will not be that way anymore and the truth is spend Spencer Smith drinks as much beer as he wants to. But the problem is, is I got saved and God changed my heart and I don't want to drink beer anymore. I don't even want to touch the, I don't even want to be in a restaurant where people are smoking cigarettes on the patio. I want to go slap that little, little wicked devil out of their face is what I want to do. <laughs> I hate that junk. And it says, what shall we say? Shall we a continuance in that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? How are we supposed to live in? I don't want to go to tool concerts anymore. I don't want to go to Aerosmith concerts anymore. I don't want to be around that crowd. I don't want to listen to ZZ Top anymore. I don't want to listen to 96 Rock anymore in Atlanta. I don't care about that. I don't want to put my mind... I, that, that, the, 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 the desire of all that is gone because God has done a work in my heart and a work in my life and I just don't want to sin anymore. Amen. And Hillsong doesn't preach this stuff. Mm. Hillsong won't even touch it. They just say, well, you know, go get you a Christian tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, go get you. You know, it's okay, Brian Hughes. It's, uh, what's his name? Brian Welch. It's okay, Brian Welch. Go back into your corn band and go ahead and go sing all your filthy songs about Satan and about, about drug abuse. Go, 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 go on tour and hang out with all those demon worshiping. And by the way, the, the, the lead singer of corn, okay, Levi, have you ever, you, you seen their band lately? It's a okay. Listen, yes, Brian Welch is traveling with a band mm -hmm. that the microphone stand of the lead singer is a nude female body. Mm -hmm. The it man is, is literally not saved. There is no way that Brian Welch is born again. There is no way that that should be okay. Nobody in their right mind as a Christian, as a spirit filled with the Holy Ghost living inside of them should ever, ever, ever want to be around that kind of stuff ever. And if you don't like it, then you don't like the Bible. Mm. This is plain talk, baby. I want to tell you that God has given to us of his Holy Spirit and that Holy Spirit will influence us and work in our lives and it will give, it will create a desire in us for holiness, not just to be a nice guy. That's the problem with these people. They get saved and they just become nice guys. So nice annoying. dudes with, de with, <laughs> with beers in their hand. Nice dudes with beer in their hand. Nice dudes standing on a stage singing heavy metal. Bunch of trash is what that is, mm. and I I've been doing um, I've been watching that movie, the Jesus music, and according to the testimony given in that movie, there is no way that those people who did Striper are even born again. Mm. I don't think Amy Grant's born again. I quite frankly don't think Chris Tomlin's born again. That guy with his stunt with Georgia Florida line that he mm. did getting up there, and those guys are talking about knocking boots with your girlfriend on your Saturday night. Everybody's going to drink a beer and get <laughs> wasted tonight. And then Chris Tomlin gets up there in the middle of all that. It's how great thou art. Oh. What a mockery. 
You people disgust me. You people are not Christians. You people are not saved. You people are the enemies of the gospel of Christ. You people are straight out of hell is what you are. That's exactly right. I stand against Hillsong because they preach a false gospel. I stand against Hillsong because they pervert the very holiness of God. I stand against Hillsong because they have perniciously weakened good churches. Perniciously weakened good churches. I want to go to Second Peter chapter 2 and verse 1 and 2. But there were many false prophets also among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privily shall bring in damnable heresies, even denying the Lord that bought them, and bring upon themselves swift destruction. And notice this right here. Many shall follow their pernicious ways, by reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Levi, I'm going to help you here, okay? The word pernicious means destructive in a subtle way, very subtle ways. Death by a thousand cuts is what it is. A subtle, just it's, it's hard to even see what's wrong with it. The way they, and politicians do this, the, the way they craft words and the way they spin things, you would think this is amazing. This is going to be good for our country. And then they do it and it turns out to be the worst thing that could ever happen. And the Bible says many that word many, meaning that if you don't fall for the pernicious, subtly destructive ways of these false teachers, <clears throat> you're going to be in the minority. You always will be. Someone messaged me on Facebook the other day and says, Brother Spencer, I got called a Bible thumper by my friends and family the other day. And I said, welcome to the family. Amen. <laughs> welcome to the club. The, come on in. The water's just fine. <laughs> I want to tell you this. That the, the ones, who, these false teachers with their pernicious, pernicious ways, their YouTube channels will always be bigger than this one. Their, <clears throat> their following will always be bigger. They, yes, they, they'll always have a bigger platform. Their Facebook pages will, will be bigger. Mm -hmm. Their Instagram following will be bigger. Their, uh, their, I mean, everything, their, their, the, the funding that they have will always be more. Mm -hmm. They will always rise out of nowhere and have a gigantic YouTube channel and, and whatever. They, they will always do that. I had one the other day. Uh, I don't even know. Their name is a husband and wife, and uh, they're young people. Mm -hmm. I've and, seen and them. They, yeah. they, they made a video about me. <laughs> okay, look, look, Levi, they made a video about me, and in the video... They promoted the wake up olive incident. You remember that dead girl died? Yeah. They they sat there and 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 promoted that. <laughs> okay? And then Melissa Daltrey has them on their channel, on her channel to mm -hmm. talk about the abuse of the gifts yep. of the spirit. I'm thinking, do you realize who these people are? But many shall follow their pernicious ways. Pernicious subtle dangerous in a subtle way. <clears throat> Brother Levi, I believe that Hillsong <clears throat> is the number one, the, the most destructive agent in the local church in the past 50 years, mm -hmm. Hillsong. Probably, I would say probably 30 years. I have seen strong churches that, that saw people saved, that preached the Bible, that were faithful. People in the church were godly and stood for what was right. And, and the people in the pews uh, were, were holy people who had a devotional life. They would go home on Sunday night, and, and they wouldn't sit and watch football games. They would read the Bible, and they would pray. And, and these people had a burden for souls, and they would weep, and they would, uh, they would be, be burdened about their lost family and their lost cousins and their lost uncles and, and all these people. They would be burdened about that and, and and it was like there was a holy work in that church and these people were right with God and and God was working in this place and then all of a sudden the pastor hires a new youth director mm. from West Coast Baptist College what are you doing out there from West Coast Baptist College and he comes in there wiggling <laughs> Hey guys, let's sing this. Let's sing this casting crown song. Mm. And then all of a sudden, he's he's a sly little devil. He knows how to hide all the instrumentation, and and not just them, but there's others out there as well. 
They've got they know how to they know how to they know how to hide all the all the the contemporariness of it. And then they start handing the CDs out in the youth group. Mm. And the pastor don't know what that boy's saying across the building on Sunday morning in Sunday school. He don't know what that guy's teaching those teenagers. But next thing you know, uh, next thing you know, half the teenagers in the church are listening to the third day mm. and listening to Hillsong and Bethel. And, and, and half of those teenagers, if they do listen to preaching, they, they start listening to Stephen Furtick. And, and a lot of these youth pastors, they come out of these colleges, are so obsessed with Stephen Furtick and they dress like him and they want to, they try to go lift to get the biceps so they can look like him. When they, when they get up and preach, they can, they want to get that look, you know, that, that, that beef <laughs> look, you know, that's what they want. They look like a bunch of dweebs. And, <clears throat> and next thing you know, a church that was, f- people were filled with the Holy Ghost, people that were filled with holy, just holy righteousness and living for God, they get to where they start liking that swaying. Mm-hmm. And that strange fire enters the church. Next thing you know, souls are not really a big deal anymore. Next thing you know, holiness is not a really a big deal anymore. These people have promoted a pernicious theology that has weakened the local church in such a way that is so subtle. It's like it's like it's like boiling the frog. It's so slow. It takes such a long time. But if you don't believe what I'm talking about, I dare you to go to Liberty University, see what's going on up there. I dare you to go find Tennessee Temple, see if you can find that. Go find, uh, well, there was one in Jacksonville, Florida, a guy named Bob Gray brought all that stuff in. Next thing you know, he's, he's dead and in jail, arrested for liking kids too much. It's a mess. And we see it over and over and over again, these pernicious ways. And Hillsong comes in with, I mean, I think Satan in the garden came and, and just said, this is a good thing. Why would you not want this? That was his line. Yep. And by the way, the very first word, uh, canonically, that, that Satan said in the Bible was the word right here, Genesis 3, 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, yea, hath God said. That word yea in the Bible, that's a, that's a fancy King James Bible way of saying the word Yes. Meaning this, Satan was a positive thinker. And we dealt with that in 3rd Adam 3X, the, the power of positive thinking, Norman Vincent Peel. Anybody who talks about the power of positive thinking is a Luciferian. I'm going to tell you that Bible preaching, reproving, rebuking, and exhorting, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 3, reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Bible preaching is two-thirds negative, one-third positive. Mm. And if a man gets up in the pulpit and he's never negative, he's never, he, like Joel Osteen, he just, you know, you've had, you've had a few failures in your life, but there's still some marvelous dreams that God has for you. <laughs> and you can still go out there and capture those rainbows and bring them all down in your pocket and, uh, and, and work those things in your life. And, and you can have everything in your life life can be candy canes and gumdrops and and cotton candy every day of your life that's that's what god has planned for you you can have that you can claim it and you can enjoy it anybody who says that's filled with satan mm. they're 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 a luciferian agent of hell exactly right that's exactly what the bible teaches and I want to tell you this. These people have perniciously, Hillsong with Carl Lentz and all these people, they have perniciously, probably the number one the past 30 years, have destroyed the local church with subtle, slow, it's, it's like you're being choked to death slowly over time. It's like it's a tumor in the body of Christ. And if left unchecked and if not completely cut out of the body, it will grow, and it will fester, and it will take over, and it will kill the local church. Levi, we're an hour and a half already, and i got two more points. <laughs> Keep going, brother. Seriously. I could listen to this all night. These people, a hill song, <laughs> thank you, Levi, have preached a false gospel. They have perverted the holiness of God. They have perniciously weakened good churches but let me say this these people have promoted a strange fire before god Mm. they have been the propagators of this leviticus 10 1 says and nadab and abihu the sons of aaron took either of them his censer and put fire therein and put incense thereon and offered strange fire 
before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out a fire from the Lord and devoured them, and they died before the Lord. Now, this is one thing a lot of people don't get about God. God is a God of order. And and I want to tell you this. If you notice, they put strange fire before the Lord, which the Lord commanded them not. I want to tell you this. Worship is not subjective. It's not. And you can thank Bill Gaither for, for promoting this to the body of Christ. This whole there, There's a big lie that's out there right now, and the devil wards and all these people believe this. They say that music is amoral. Okay, that, and that's fine. And, and what they do is they say, well, you know, if you take the keys of a piano and you, uh, you know, there, there is no such thing as, as an, immoral, uh, an immoral A note. And I get that. Okay, if I just go with piano and hit a middle C and just hit it right there with your thumb, because that's what my piano pe- teacher taught me to do, right there with your thumb, middle C. If you hit that middle C, there's nothing immoral or moral about a middle C. I get that. I understand that. But you can take a string of notes and string them all together, and you can make something immoral out of that. Yes, sir. You can do that. Yeah. So music is not subjective. A note can be amoral, a single note, but the way you put it together and even the style in which you put it together can be used for moral or immoral purposes. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, I got this keyboard right here, okay? Do you see? There, there's, there's, I mean, like if I hit the letter L on here, there's nothing moral or immoral about the letter L. But I can sit here and with my fingers, I can string together a bunch of letters and I can put together something immoral with my very fingers right here. I can do that. Yes, sir. Okay. That's what, that is the lie of all this. Rap music is not amoral. Rock music is not amoral. Techno music is not amoral. And you cannot just get out there and just. Jesus. <laughs> We're going to jam for the lamb. Wow. God is good. We love Jesus. Wow. You can't do that and say that you're right with God. That's not how worship works. And if you don't believe that, look at this. Nadab and Abihu got up and they offered strange fire before the Lord, which he commanded them not. And there went out fire from the Lord and devoured them and they died before the Lord. You can go look also at Uzzah in his cart. Uzzah, uh, put, they put the cart, uh, the ark of God upon a cart like the Philistines did. That was a holy piece of furniture. They were not supposed to do that. They were supposed to, to carry it in such a way, and only the Levites were supposed to carry that. And, and I want to tell you guys that, that to do the work of God in the same manner that the Philistines did is a traitorous thing. You are, you are, you are destroying the very order of God, and I would say that, that, that there's a spirit spiritual death that happens when all that Mm. music is not subjective and these people the hill song they they promote all this godless techno and i mean there was i saw a video that was complete garbage from hill song australia probably two years ago and these girls were doing a pop and lock routine (laughs) And it was and and it was this is this strange. I mean, it's like it was stuff that was so weird. Skill Rex wouldn't even touch it. I mean, it was weird, and it was just and these girls are for Jesus. I mean, it was bizarre, and I'm like, what is what is this trash? It had nothing to do with the gospel. It had nothing to do with God. It had nothing to do. I mean, and they're sitting there, like they're sitting there literally in in yoga pants and sports bras. And that's what they're doing. I'm like, oh, and you're calling this worship. Mm-hmm. I would say, I think I pulled a muscle. Was it under the was it under the bridge? Yeah. That, that was it. Yeah. They had they had to I sweep remember. heroin needles out of the way so they could film that video. They they had oh, they had to goodness. they had to pay the bum 20 bucks so he'd clean up a little bit and step off for a little while so they could film that and then they had to get in there and sweep the heroin needles out of the place so they could film that video strange fire before the lord strange fire and they went out of fire from the lord devoured them and they died before the lord hillsong i think is the number one promoter of all this and um 
I think that's what they're doing. It's a shame. Let me give you my final point real quick. Number one, Hillsong. I'm against Hillsong because they preach a false gospel. I'm against Hillsong because they perverted the very holiness of God. I'm against Hillsong because they have perniciously weakened the local church. I'm against Hillsong because they have promoted a false worship. But number five, number five, I'm against Hillsong because they have literally pushed the church into the arms of Rome. That's what they did. Mm. Yes, sir. Guys, I want to tell you right now that the harlot of Revelation chapter 18 is Roman Catholicism. It'll be a one-world religion that I believe will be headed up by the Pope. Matter of fact, I mean, there's, there's so many things going on right now. Let's see. Pope's going to unite the religions of the world. There's so many things. I mean, like right here, I mean, I'm just type in Pope unites religions. I mean, this, I'm just I'm pull it up, see something anytime the past month, there's probably a lot of that. Here we go. I'm just NCR online. I mean, 16 hours ago, I, I don't even, I don't even know what this article says, but it says 16. I mean, well, it's an article. Somebody wants me to download. I'm not going to download it. Maybe I will. Who knows? But there's people out there who are promoting the, an interfaith dialogue. And uh, this is MDPI. I'm just just show you what I just downloaded here on the computer. Pope Francis culture of dialogue is a pathway to interfaith, a special focus on in Islam. Mm -hmm. He's promoting religions. And guys, this all of this interfaith stuff is straight out of hell. It's evil. And uh, what he's trying to do, kind of, you know, uniting all religions together. Guys, if you, if you haven't watched Third Adam 2, please go watch that. Uh, we are, and I'm going to pull it up on my channel right here so everybody can see it. But guys, I want to tell you right now, Third Adam 2, we discuss all this at length right here, the great seduction. And Lou Giglio and all these other crazies out there promoting this stuff and believing this stuff and uh, are talking about it. Paul told Timothy in the last days, fast for you. many shall give. And um, they're all, they're pushing all this into the arms of Mother Rome. And we, you know, me and Johnny were in Paris and we sat there and walked through a Catholic church and showed you all the mystery religion that was there. Hillsong is promoting a brand of Christianity that will push you into the arms of Mother Rome. This is a, this is a big deal. This is not no small thing, folks. This is a huge deal. And that's what they're doing. Let me show you a verse in the Bible here if I can. In Revelation chapter number 18. And uh, if I can, please. And I, I'm, 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 forgive me if, I'm, if you find me a little over the top. I, I apologize. This is, this is real to me. This is real to me. I hope you forgive me. The Bible says, Revelation 18.1. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with his glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, and has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. Go study. Um, hang on here. If you insult how others worship, you are the problem. Do better. Do you see that, Levi? I'm gonna just those people. I'm gonna tell you what's wrong with these people, and and I'm banning her right here. I can't I can't help you. If you can watch this, if you can watch this, lady. If and and by the way, Levi, it's always a woman. It's always some woman who obviously has not watched Third Adam Three: Rise of the Divine Feminine. Mm -hmm. It's just it's just how it is. Um, you know, I'll just go ahead and ban them. I don't, you know, I don't know what's going on tonight with the, the live chat. Uh, but I don't know how you could sit there and watch the Hillsong Generation, watch Third Adam One, Two, Three, and Three X, and then make a completely ridiculous comment like that. Does it make any sense? I mean, I'm sitting here showing you Bible. If you can't, if you can't see a problem with Hillsong, 
then you are the problem, lady. God bless you. Have a nice life. It says there in verse number two, and he cried with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen, is fallen, has become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and the cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. Reward her, even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works in the cup which she hath filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I said a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. It says here about this woman and the kings of the earth who have committed fornication to live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her. For when they see the smoke of her burning standing afar off for the fear and torment, saying, Alas, alas, for the great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. And it says right here, verse number 12, The merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones and pearls, fine linen, purple and silk and scarlet, that just that just looks like a Catholic mass. Yes. Strange cinnamon odors and frankincense and wine and oil, mm. fine flour. Just I just I don't know. Just said some strange strange similarities. I don't want to go any, anywhere near that thing. But Romanism, and we showed in Third Adam two, says it doesn't matter if you're Baptist or Pentecostal or Catholic. You can all do this. That's dangerous talk. And that's why I believe Hillsong should be called Hillsong. Mm. Now I want to make a couple of warnings. I'm going to take a quick break. I'm going to make a couple of warnings to you on the other side of the break. Uh, but I want to remind you again, everybody who makes a donation tonight, we'll be doing a drawing for how many? How many? We've got any good entries over there? Mm-hmm. And uh, people who make a donation tonight, whether live chat or in the PayPal tonight, we'll get uh, put in a drawing for these CDs, and we'll, we'll we will try to uh, we'll do that very quickly. And appreciate you guys. Uh, we're gonna take a quick break. We'll be right back, and uh, don't go away. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. A couple years ago, the Lord laid on my heart to do some research into the contemporary Christian music world, and I was astounded at at what I found. I just found so many unbelievably unbiblical things, even some demonic things that were happening. And the Lord led me to put all that into a book form, and this is the book we have written, Calling Evil Good, The Live Christian Rock and Roll. And as far as books that are dealing with the negative and the dangerous aspects of contemporary Christian music, this book right now is the number one seller as of the time of the recording this video. And so uh, we want to put this out there and let you know about this book. Uh, This book will be shipped to your front door by Amazon. And we've had so many good reports from all over the world, really, of people saying that, man, this book really opened up my eyes to the truth of this entire industry. And we deal with people like Hulk Hogan, Britney Spears, Beyonce, uh, Amy Grant, Alice Cooper, Elvis Presley, Larry Norman, R. Kelly, Puff Daddy, and all the record companies really all together. We deal with the, the whole big spectrum. So get your copy today. There's a link in the description below, and I know this book will help you understand the issue better and understand why this is an issue. So God bless you, friend. Hope you enjoyed the book. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and look forward to many good updates with you in the future. God bless you. Hey guys, your friend Spencer here. I've got exciting news about our new book, From Football to Faith. It is now available on Amazon.com. All you have to do is click the link below. It'll take you to Amazon's website, and you can get your own copy sent to your front door, and that will be a blessing. Uh, In this book, I gave my testimony of how I came to know Christ as my Savior, and a lot of the character lessons that I learned playing football that are applicable to the Christian life. And you'll find many good stories in here that are funny, some that are sad, some that are uh, inspirational. But I'm sure this book will be a blessing to you. Christians young and old will enjoy this book, and I know that it'll be a blessing to you. So go ahead and get your copy today, and we appreciate you guys. And if you haven't done this already, go ahead and subscribe to our channel. And look forward to many more good videos together in the future. God bless you, friend. Have a good day. This church here on the left... church.
church here on the left and then uh, you, you see the yoga class on the right. Both of these groups are having the same involuntary shakings and uh, the manifestations of the Kundalini is uh, one of the ex manifestations is uncontrolled shakings and both of these parties are having the same experience. All right, guys, thank you very much for that quick break. We appreciate you guys. Got over 1,000 people watching tonight and uh, appreciate that very much. What we've done is over the past few minutes, uh, you know, of course, uh, while I was uh, doing my renting on all that, um, there have been uh, several donations come in, and what we've got, we've got some good CDs here. These are just hymns from Brother Alberico, um, and there's some some songs he wrote, Almighty Unchangeable God, His Alone, He is the Everlasting God, Ancient of Days, about the very character of God. It's just some really good stuff. He's one of my favorite singers, and uh, the he's got some songs about the gospel and uh this is you know if we're going to talk about the bad stuff we're probably going to try to promote the good stuff too and we should and uh so we thank god for that that opportunity we have there to give that to you and so everybody who made a donation tonight we um <laughs> we put their names in a drawing and uh, let me know when you're ready there brother levi we'll get all those ready to go and uh <laughs> levi levi's not as quick as johnny he's he's uh mm -hmm. he's getting better though we appreciate him very much John's a pro. and uh yeah john Johnny, Johnny's away with a baby right now, and uh, he has uh, <clears throat> he's not going to sleep for another month or so, it seems like. And that's going to be a lot of fun. So, uh, But we appreciate you guys watching. Uh, I want to encourage you, if you haven't, uh, of course, if, if you're new here, there's a lot of, we got new people. We're getting like thousands of new subscribers every month. And I want to just once again reiterate this, that our Third Adam documentaries are really a lot of the things that we say on this channel. Uh, are can be understood greatly by sitting down and just watching these documentaries right here and uh the four and a half hour one third adam 3x is available and uh man really i i don't know how many times i get emails a week saying that these these documentaries have changed my life mm. and uh, we appreciate that very much and so doctrine does matter and uh so please go watch those if you haven't done so yet and then also after after our live stream tonight we're going to do our pre-trib post party i've already posted it for everybody to go see and i want you guys to go check that out and uh, that'll be a great blessing and uh, we'll we'll talk to you guys a little bit there that'll be good just for and that's just for our channel members only those who support our channel and if you want to support our channel monthly uh, one of the ways you can do that is just to hit that join button uh on the uh on the tab right here you can just see it right there if you have trouble doing it on a phone or tablet just go to a desktop computer or laptop or something and just do it right there in your web browser hit that join button and uh, there's a lot of perks there we send out free books to our channel members and all that kind of stuff and uh and so you guys get to be a part of that so levi we got those ready Oh, one more. <laughs> we got one more to do, and he's going to pass those to me. And uh, do you know how to do the sound effects and everything? Yes. Okay. Just the drum roll. Drum, drum roll and the applause is what we got to do. <laughs> so drum roll and the applause, and right. uh, that'll be a great blessing there. So we've got the drum roll ready. Let's go ahead and do the yes, drum sir. roll. Go ahead. All right. Very good. Drum roll for the first. Just, just oh, let it go. <laughs> first winner tonight is... You're not doing this wow. right, Levi. You're not doing this I right. Okay. This takes practice. Yeah, go ahead and hit that button so it stops applauding. And uh, there we go. So, all right. The first <laughs> winner of a CD tonight. Now you didn't put the camera on you. Levi, you, there's so we'll many buttons. <laughs> there's so many buttons. It's, it's tough. Uh, first winner tonight is Evan Holiday. We're going to have to work on that, Levi. You're doing yeah, good, though. All right. Practice. Second winner tonight is... Okay, we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> to work on this it's it's <laughs> is sarah there we go <laughs> okay all right all right the third winner tonight is fiona yar that was all right the fourth winner is good josh bc <laughs> number four Number five is manda manda <laughs> mandatory vacation. That's number five. All right, let's just do number six. Let's just forget that. The, 
<laughs> Just forget it, Levi. Uh, number six it. is Tontab 3. Tontab? Tontab 3, number six. All right. Number seven is <laughs> Brian Parisi. There we go. Number eight is number eight. Okay. Joseph Cabahug. Cabahug. That's number eight. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go. Number nine is <laughs> JD Burke 74. I like I like Brother Burke. He's a good fellow. Mm-hmm. Number nine. There we go. All right. Number 10 is. Oh, I got two. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I got two twice now. Jenna Jean. Jenna Jean. So those are our 10 winners. Uh, everybody who's a winner tonight, go ahead and email us Spencer Smith contest at gmail.com Spencer Smith contest at gmail.com. We will mail you one of these CDs for free, just as a thank you for watching and just to be a blessing to you. Thank you guys very much. So do we have any good questions tonight? Everybody saying rigged again. These people are just hopeless ingrates is what they are. We got people right here, brother Doug saying rigged again and <laughs> Meg saying rigged again. You guys are just the worst. It was me. I don't tell you what. J.D. Burke says, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Thank you very much for that. And uh, so um, let's see here. Um, Let's see. I don't know. Some strange comments here. We had some strange comments there. Mm. And uh, so um, Scene in Rage says, did you hear they found envelopes full of checks and money in the wall at Joel Osteen's church? Yes, I did. (laughs) Yes, I did. What a mess that was. And uh, I don't understand. So, Carrie Lawson says, clearly rigged. <laughs> clearly. You know, you try to be a blessing and give away stuff to people, and uh, and that's just what they – I tell you what, just, just the, it's just the best. Right. So, yeah, Cheryl's got it right here. Spencer Smith Contest at gmail.com. Appreciate you guys. And uh, thank you, Cheryl, for everything. And uh, we, got a lot, we had a lot of work we had to do tonight. And uh, so, <laughs> Russell Gibson says, not, m- not me, I'm not a member, but love to listen to chat god bless you all thank you so much russell for listening i appreciate that man thank you so much and uh so pk says these reprobates <laughs> <laughs> oh boy and uh so praise the lord uh let's see here oh boy uh just passing through need a new cd been listening to the same couple cds in the car for at least a year yeah i ain't seen you in just a, i ain't seen you in a while so i appreciate you being being on here I, maybe i just haven't caught you haven't caught my eye in the chat or anything so but that'll be good. So, um, what were you saying, Levi? What was I saying? I don't know. What were you saying? Oh, no. I was just saying, wow, that oh. she's uh, listening to the same music. Yeah. So, so, well, you know, I, I get in, I do that. I, I like, I, I do that all the time. So, well, uh, Brother Levi, before we go, you got anything interesting or insightful or useful you want to say tonight? I just want to say, uh, keep your eyes open. You know, they're everywhere. False teachers are. And like yeah. he, was, he was talking about people slipping into independent fundamental Baptist churches too. It's out there, and uh, yeah. Satan definitely wants to destroy those who are standing for truth, and uh, not just the person, but the church as well, mm. so be careful. Yeah. Amen. Very good. Very good, Levi. Thank you for that. And uh, you guys are a blessing out there. Thank you guys for watching, and uh, we uh, we hope that you would smite thine like button, and uh, if you do that, then uh, $20 million will fall out of the sky, and you'll have a private <laughs> jet and all that good stuff right there. So smite thine like button, guys. We appreciate you very much. And uh, we're going to play some music, and we'll see you ch- you channel members over in the Preacher and Post Party. That'll be a lot of fun. So we love you all. Thank you very much for everything, and uh, we will see you guys next time. Have a good night. I have never seen the face of my Savior, but serving Him has been such a thrill. I have never seen the gates to that city. One day
first met him, he has been all to me. In my life, with joy he has filled. And I'm longing for the day when my eyes shall behold him. But one day, one day. Tell